When rivals like Tesla, Ford, General Motors, and Audi are in the news, Porsche's E-Ice engine is creating waves by offering a strong substitute. While electric vehicles' zero-emission capabilities and futuristic styling have made them more popular, Porsche wants to preserve the thrilling driving experience while reducing their negative impact on the environment. How Porsche is going to continue using internal combustion engines? Porsche's synthetic fuels ensure that internal combustion engines will continue to run without emitting carbon dioxide, even though they are still a few years away from mainstream manufacture. While the majority of manufacturers plan to transition to all-electric or largely electric vehicles by 2030, some are attempting to save our beloved internal combustion engine. Porsche is one of the automakers that wants to reduce the carbon footprint of traditional transportation. The German company has invested more than $100.0 million in e-fuels thus far. Synthetic fuels have been added as an exemption to the proposed ban on internal combustion engines, which is set to go into force in 2035 by the European Commission, the executive body of the European Union. Porsche appears to have devised a clever solution to preserve internal combustion engines by substituting carbon-neutral synthetic fuels for liquid dinosaurs. However, the questions we shall answer below are how exactly does it function? Would we be able to acquire it sooner rather than later? And should we put our trust in it? Synthetic fuels make sense for a few reasons, not only for Porsches, but for a larger range of transportation applications as well. Porsche claims that the cost of making electric vehicles is more than that of combustion-powered vehicles and that it will take too long to convert its whole lineup to electric power. Another strategy to quicken the decarbonization of the brand's lineup is to use e-fuels. In addition, Porsche's flagship model, the 911, has a cult following and is among the most admired sports vehicles ever produced. Leaving the rear engine model combustion-powered is one method to preserve the tradition that fans and owners of the model, whether air-cooled or water-cooled, take such great pride in. Furthermore, the Porsche 911 is presently the most successful EV produced by a heritage carmaker, accounting for 13% of brand sales, higher than the 11% of the Porsche taken. Transportation by air and sea is another application for e-fuels. Electricity is currently showing promise as a fossil fuel substitute in the automobile industry, but it wouldn't function nearly as well in maritime and aviation applications. In these applications, battery electric propulsion performs less than optimally mostly because of the weight of ships and aircraft. That being said, although they won't totally replace electricity, Synthetic fuels appear to be a more adaptable option than electric propulsion. How does e-fuel from Porsche operate? Donut Media recently visited Porsche's synthetic fuel refinery in Punta Arenas, Chile, to learn more about the ins and outs of the company's fuel. The location was chosen for a legitimate reason, but it is too far away for any kind of distribution to be financially feasible. Porsche uses a lot of wind to produce its synthetic fuel, and this portion of Chile has some of the world's highest wind speeds. One of the key components of gasoline is hydrocarbons. It is mostly composed of carbon and hydrogen, as the name implies, and crude oil is a great source of it. But those two components can also be obtained in another method. Porsche's factory in Chile was designed expressly to bond hydrogen from water and carbon dioxide from the air to make hydrocarbons in a way that is far more environmentally friendly. Essentially, the main ingredients in Porsche's e-fuel are air and water. By passing a steady electrical current through water, a process known as electrolysis can be used to obtain hydrogen. This process separates the hydrogen in the negative pole and releases oxygen into the atmosphere. A direct air capture device is used to capture carbon dioxide. To put it simply, it's a stack of turbines that draws air through a large number of hot filters that are filled with solvents that absorb carbon dioxide. Essentially, concentrated carbon dioxide is trapped during the intake of unclean air and the subsequent extraction of clean air. 
Porsche has achieved poetic brilliance by figuring out how to turn the toxic particles that internal combustion engines emit into fuel that is good for the environment. Methanol synthesis is carried out by combining carbon dioxide, CO2, and hydrogen gas A2 in a different unique apparatus. The end product is methanol, but to create a synthetic gasoline blend made up of both heavy and light gasoline, it must undergo one more synthesis that involves heat and vaporization. The most intriguing aspect is that Porsche's synthetic blend doesn't pollute, even though it has the same molecular structure as regular gasoline. A Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo Turbo S filled with 40, 10.56 US gallons of synthetic gasoline drives and sounds exactly the same as it would if it were running on regular gasoline, according to a test drive conducted by Donut Media. How effective is e-fuel for Porsche? To investigate the production process in order to provide an answer to that inquiry, the logistics are not fully arranged at this time. Porsche's sole e-fuel manufacturing facility is in Chile, and even that facility isn't fully operational yet. So getting the synthetic fuel to the largest markets will be costly and currently done through transportation, which primarily uses fossil fuels. The use of wind energy in the production process is a major contributor to the environmental friendliness of e-fuel production. Furthermore, how much of the environmentally friendly juice Porsche can produce is a mystery. With a target of producing 15 million gallons, 56.8 million liters, by 2030 or 1.0 billion liters by 2028 if we include Porsche's e-fuel plants in Texas and Australia the current production output is 34,000 gallons 128,704 liters that is still less than the 369 million gallons of gasoline used daily by drivers in the United States alone Although this may call into question the feasibility of Porsche's efforts in the field of synthetic fuels, Daniel Schwarz, the managing director of Porsche, stated in front of CNBC that the company's access to Volkswagen's large factory will be essential to significantly increasing the output of e-fuel production and lowering their cost. Porsche's e-fuel currently costs $40 per gallon which is around six times higher than the price of regular gasoline in the United States. What are Porsche's future plans? Like many automakers, Porsche will have to contend with strict emission regulations by 2030 in addition to heightened competition in the EV market. The Porsche Taycan, the company's first entirely electric vehicle, was introduced in 2019. Even though it's been a huge success, the Porsche EV is still the only one available for purchase. Porsche also offers a selection of plug-in hybrids, but more fully electric vehicles may be required in the future due to regulations governing combustion engines becoming more stringent. Porsche said at its annual press conference earlier this year that it plans to introduce at least four new electric vehicles by the end of the decade as part of a grand entrance into the EV market. Oliver Bloom, the CEO, made pronouncements that align with Porsche's ambitions when he disclosed the company's 2030 aspirations. It is anticipated that sales of electric cars, such as plug-in hybrids or full electric vehicles, will account for half of all new Porsche sales by 2025. By 2030, about 80% of newly manufactured cars should have electric drives. It appears that creating brand new cars from the ground up won't be necessary in this electrified future. Porsche is concentrating on growing its crossover lineup and occasionally switching to electrified vehicles instead. Porsche plans to release four new electrified cars. The first of them, along with revised gasoline and diesel models, is the 2024 Porsche Macan EV, which is scheduled to go on sale early in 2019. The Audi A6 e-tron and its all-electric variant will share the same platform. Although the car's engine is still under wraps, Porsche promises that it will have a longer range than the Taycan. Beginning in 2025, Porsche plans to convert the new 718 to a fully electric vehicle in addition to the Macan. 
As per the company's current promotional efforts, the 718 is set to be Porsche's inaugural electrified sports vehicle. Since 2019, Porsche has been developing electric prototypes of the 718, and the company has now officially announced its arrival. Following the 718 EV soon, Porsche will unveil an all-electric KN as part of its ambitious electrification agenda. The electric crossover, which is anticipated in 2026, will use the same platform as the 2024 Macan EV. Porsche will still sell the KN with an internal combustion engine though, unlike the 718. Launched in 2023, a new third-generation model will come with three improved range plug-in hybrid vehicles. Together with these three, Porsche has also revealed the existence of a flagship electric SO that would replace the KN and aid in the company's goal of selling 80% EV vehicles by 2030. What do you think of the new engine that Porsche has? Do you believe Porsche can outperform other automakers to take the top spot in the market? Please leave a comment with your opinion on this. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Goodbye.